right. Well, welcome, welcome, Pip. Welcome to St. Joseph's Evangelization Network. And today, it's really my pleasure to be here with a with a new friend, Scott Goley. And Scott comes to us uh, after being at the, the Marian Conference here in St. Louis, and he comes to he, us here as an evangelist in a way. And I'm going to let him talk a little bit more about that as we sit over our coffee and, and talk about what it means to have a passion for Christ and to live that out. I think that's what I heard from us as we were talking earlier. So pl- great to see you, Scott. Thank you, Deacon oh, Tom. Yeah. It's nice to be with you. I was Thank hoping you you, you talk a little bit so that I can understand. Everybody wants to know where you where you come from, but more like where do you come from spiritually, and what brings you here? So I'm an Indiana native. Um, grew up in Southern Indiana and uh, cradle Catholic, Catholic schools. Um, spiritually, I uh, feel like God has been white with me and protected me from the bigger pitfalls. But uh, there have been times there was more lukewarm and. Uh, you know, being a product of the Catholic schools and, and seeing sort of the institution, if you will, and, and, and making this journey, is, uh, I've had a, a subconscious sense, I think, many times that there was just something more. There was something a bit deeper that we were to be striving for and a relationship with Christ in the first that I was longing for and, and, and really at the, at the center. So. Well, I, I want to I want to stop you there if you don't mind. Sure. So so you have a background that many of us might share. You know, we we may have gone to Catholic school, we may not have. We may have gone to uh, uh, Parish School of Religion, we may not have. But we 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 know something about what it means to be Christian and spiritual. And then and then you've talked about something more. And I think a lot of people would 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 share that feeling. So when you got this impression in your heart that there was something more that God was calling you to do. What was that like for you, and what did you do with it? I think it was my own Catherine of Siena moment. I mean, I've come to set Catherine the world Siena, on. I've said? come to set the world oh, okay. on fire. How I wish that we're already ablaze, or uh, you know, if we we're lukewarm, we'll be vomited out. And I think I, you know, I'm a passionate person, and uh, whether that's the German of German descent, or that I'm the oldest child, or a combination of different factors, and your education and experience form us into who we are. But if we're a person that uh, you know loves the Lord, and we seek that relationship with Him, and we're thinking, well, this world really does not satisfy. So we're of the world, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. And um, so when you when you uh, kind of went through your your spiritual education and you, you got this impression that you should should do more what was the first thing you did with it more retreats in college um, more service and we spoke a little bit earlier uh, some of the volunteer experiences that I have had I've been blessed to have what, very were, fortunate what were those to have. like because I, I, I didn't I, I want to bring everybody into our sure. conversation they were defining moments for me, and I think you know, when we serve, whether it be the poorest of the poor, you know, a really extreme example like a Mother Teresa, or, or if we go on a, a mission trip and, and build homes for low-income folks, or uh, we do some uh, evangelizing in the street corner, we are serving the homeless at a soup kitchen, and through God's grace I've been blessed to do many of these things. Um, maybe the, the biggest was a about 12-month stint in the Appalachia Mountains doing low-income housing and some non-denominational groups but many Catholics from all over the country and that was uh, as a young guy who was in college and towards the end of that just out of college that was very formative. Very Can I formative. ask you how did you affect them and how did they affect you? I've heard um, fellow ministry brothers and sisters talk about if we're in service if we're in evangelizing we're always going to gain and grow more and I could truly attest to that like I grew more than I ever could have given um, but I was I was in an element there. I was able to work with a lot of people. I was able to do some hands-on things. I'm a doer in a lot of ways. Um, but then I was able to learn from a unique group of people that was you know in the mountains of Kentucky. It's uh, a very unique culture. So you know, kind of cast in or, or given this gift of being in a place that was sort of foreign, um, and you grow and you you learn new things. I think it was great. So so I I, I love that you were willing to be stretched. And and uh, when you're stretched, you create a a space to be filled. In, in the world, if we're stretched by the world, right, we, we have ambition for, for a higher office or we have ambition for a greater business or whatever, that stretches us and it may fill us with things of the world. You were stretched in another way, it looks like. What, what did it fill you up with? A longing for 
uh, deeper relationship with the Lord through community with others and uh, to share those gifts that I we know is our greatest treasure in the Catholic faith, uh, the Holy Eucharist, and uh, when we're able to witness these things, and as we talked just briefly, but bring Christ to life for someone else uh, through the grace of our Lord and through the power of the Holy Spirit um, and through relationship, through community. And I, and I think we're in a, a societal time where we can truly um, look at this reality of community being attacked with uh, things that are going on. They're sort of divisive in the world. Think we need, we're made for union and communion with each other, with Almighty God. Um, so yeah, something that was a, a, a huge part of the experience was just all those relationships with uh, folks that came and wanted to help, wanted to improve, wanted to be part of the solution. Well, that is great. So, so that's kind of was the was the basis, and thank you for sharing that. With sure, us. that was kind of the basis for your for your uh, uh, your passion was the compassion. We talked about this briefly off air that your compassion for these people created a passion in you for other people to know Christ. But I want to ask you a, a personal question. You may ruminate over it for a few minutes before you, you answer deeper in our interview. But, but. How has your relationship with Christ made that a, a, a deeper calling within you, made that calling, the mission you got at your baptism, to be more present to you? I can think of a few different points uh, that I think are answers to that question and maybe some uh, different elements at different times throughout a few different seasons in, say, the past 10 to 15 years of my life. Um, uh, subconsciously at least I felt like the Lord was inviting me and whispering to me and in those times of being stretched and experiencing uh, highs and lows in my own personal life he was filling those spaces up with things that only he could do only the God of the universe could do in a beautiful way but uh, he was calling me to uh, bring him to life I think for others um, and uh, to come to know him more deeply, but um, to, to grow in relationship and think, uh, again, our ultimate pursuit is heaven. Our ultimate pursuit is um, an eternal uh, time with our Lord. And so I think society is, is starving for that, and many don't realize it. Um, and as the Lord puts those seeds in our hearts, and it's certainly our, uh, our job and our, our beautiful opportunity to share those those encounters and those experiences and that gospel of uh, truth and salvation. So, so the seed's in your heart. <laughs> and it's being watered and nurtured by your encounters with other people, it sounds like. And so where has that brought you in the ministry now? In the past five to seven years, um, the Lord's really allowed me to, to, to cast the net wider geographically. And... Um, you build relationships, you walk with people, and you, you put those roots down deep. I mean, there's there's plenty of scripture accounts of the, the tree near the river and the roots deep. And I think this is one of the realities that we are so blessed with in the Catholic Church to have this opportunity to just go to a limitless depth. And I love this. And I, I um, am an explorer by nature and uh, an adventurer and an explorer, but... Um, Again, I think that being with people in person and, and building personal relationships is always going to be valuable. Sure, we can use modern technology, and it's it's very helpful and it's important and it's efficient at times to reach people with a, uh, an opportunity like this or a podcast or different things. But there's always going to be value in being at that kitchen table or uh, doing an event with them in their own home. And I've been um, blessed with many of those opportunities in many states. So, well, those. tell me a little bit then about this Catholic resiliency and. Uh, uh, is that is that a, a non-for-profit organization? It is, and so and is that the name you came up with? Is that what you, it's your it's your baby? It's God's ministry, um, and He blessed me to uh, be steward while I'm in this life. And uh, we sort of describe it as having a four-pronged initiative of prayer and sacraments, moral formation, skills training, and solidarity, and. Um, a number of different events fall under these different four categories. But can um, you go down through those through those with me? Because sure. I, I really don't want to. I really don't want to <coughs> miss the opportunity to 
to sit and listen uh, to each one of those. You know, each one of those uh, bases, so to speak. There's there's four of them, not like a not like the baseball diamond, you know. But uh, I guess maybe your home plate is one of those. But having said that, what, can you tell me more about each one of those that that has ignited a fire in you that that may ignite one in me? If we're lukewarm, we'll be vomited out. It's in the scriptures, well, we're to be we're to be passionate of the prayer and sacraments. Um, his relationship. I mean, someone that's married, um, if they spent weeks, months, years, decades with a spouse, they're going to be continuing to get to know that that significant other. And the Lord's calling us into, a, I think, a very similar, or beautiful parallel in the spiritual life. And that time spent with Him, it's countercultural, um, but the fruits are uh, beyond description. You know, and I, the prayer and sacraments and the, you know continually doing some self exploration and discernment of you know which ways is the lord calling me what sort of a spirituality and uh, how do i deepen my uh, community with him and with other like minded believers and, and there's a lot in that category um, if i came to you and i said uh, scott you know i i i'd like to have a stronger relationship with christ i i i see your first prong here about prayer and sacraments um, and I and I know about the sacraments and stuff like that, but and, and and that's that's important. But what would you say to me if I said, "Well, I, I my prayer life doesn't seem as fulfilling as I'd like it to be." What would you What would you tell me? I know you give conferences, and we'll talk a little bit more of that as we go. But but can you give me just just a, if we were just sitting here and I I got to catch a bus? Uh, what would you tell me? If we about prayer. Um, love the Lord. We're going to love our brothers and sisters in Christ, and it's in the Scriptures. Uh, this love God and love neighbor and loving neighbor. Uh, we'd want others to be able to have that beautiful depth, the relationship that we do. So the communal element of it. But um, I think I could really share and uh, ignite a fire in someone with a beautiful story that I heard last weekend at the Marian Conference. There was a longtime evangelist and speaker, and, and this person said, you know, "20 years of daily adoration." Um, and, and a 30, uh, sorry, 40 plus year marriage, but a, um, a beautiful relationship of the, with the Lord. And, you, and you're hearing adoration, this. Are you talking about Eucharistic adoration before the Blessed Sacrament? Not necessarily exclusively. That, that is certainly a part of the mix, but uh, an intentional intentionality. And then, I mean, that's a word in the prayer realm that we've got to incorporate, and I've got to do better at that too, for sure, and that's an ongoing process. But this person had said, being in the chapel in adoration daily for 20 years has been uh, a great tool in their tool chest. So and, so if I couldn't get to adoration, just being with is important then, is what I'm hearing from you. Absolutely. Okay. Maybe it's a prayer corner in your home, and you know, a place where you've got sacramentals. And, but we love someone. We want to spend time with them, right? right. It's a process. Yeah. And letting go of some of this busyness is not easy for most of us. Well, that's beautiful. But, but then um, the next prong that you, that you mentioned was, was moral formation. And, uh, and, I, and I guess what, it, as part of your ministry, do you, do you kind of touch all four of those prongs? If you, had like, if you were a retreat master for a retreat at my church or, or if you were go, coming to speak at a conference or putting a conference on yourself, is that how I would most likely interact with, you, with Catholic resiliency? Certainly. Um, and we're composite beings, mind, body, and soul, so feeding these different aspects of who we are. I, I believe or convicted can uh, in a lot of ways happen through the different prongs of the approach. Um, and uh, yeah, absolutely, I mean, you're, you're spot on. And so uh, something that comes to mind in, in a poignant um, experience for me has been learning about, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, whether it's a longtime priest um, or someone that has maybe not necessarily a specialization, whether it be a spiritual director or whatnot, but uh, say, say an exorcist. It's got a really broad spectrum of experience. And we look at their um, wisdom and knowledge and experience, and say Father Ritberger, just gigantic experience and perspective, and he talks about things, uh, moral precision, and it's resonated with me so much, and the moral formation is maybe one that I struggle with more to be disciplined in, uh, doing good readings of the lives of the saints or spiritual reading um, I, so in this culture where I where I have a 
um, uh, where I don't realize I'm being formed when I look on my phone and, 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 and Google 20 things a day or, or, or whatever. What, what would you say to somebody like that or like me who, who might be tempted to by, by just the the activity and the and the in the um, in uh, I, I'm trying to come up with the right word, but the inspiration that we get from looking at different things and and having that that uh, wonder about it. What would you say about that in moral formation that 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 I would like to crave? Well, certainly um, for all of us uh, striving for greater intentionality, and I've heard it said we got to keep our keep our mind clean. And it's difficult in the modern age where we're in an information age where we can just have, you know, almost anything at our fingertips. Um, what sort of uh, barometer do we have? And that's formed obviously through faith as to uh, how good of a screen and a, a filter do we use with that content coming into our mind. You know, you look at the holy religious that spend their life on the inside, so to speak doing the heavy lifting in prayer and free in the vows, not having all these worldly realities. And, and so many times just being around them, it's so inspiring. And I, at least subconsciously, I feel like for me, um, the Lord has sort of infused uh, uh, some level of element just in those experiences for me, doing some work for some holy religious sisters or different things. And, and just to see their witnesses so powerful. So their witnesses caused you to have a thirst for that. Sure. A thirst for the... For, for that moral formation that you've used the word purity and I think that that that's resonating with what you're talking about what would you one thing we don't we don't have time to go through everything you would talk about in moral formation but what would be the one thing you would suggest to me to help me initiate that type of life in a moral formation I love the phrase nothing's more attractive than holiness uh, because the Lord we made all these things of beauty in the world around us, and the, the, the pinnacle being uh, man and woman, you know, and, and, and women are beautiful, and yet we see society defiling beautiful elements of sexuality and that which is most sacred, and prioritizing in our mind and our soul um, ways that we're going to uh, honor God through sort of giving glory to these beauties while not allowing lust in and whatnot, and, and these are... These are battles in society that are, we've got to arm ourselves up. Um, but it's a prayer life. It's intentionality. Before the feet hit the floor, the knees hit the floor. Before the head hits the pillow, the knees hit the floor, and some of those types of things. Well, that's great suggestions for me. And you, you also, I guess, nice segue from that suggestion on how I can develop a better prayer and a better moral life that you that you talk about in these retreats and these conferences you give on obviously we're just scratching the surface I'm just I'm just picking off a few of the nice little uh, uh, candies off the top of the cake I haven't even gotten into the frosting or, or, or the depth of it with you yet but but then you also talk about one of the other uh, pillars of what you try to do is 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 skill training what's what's that skill training about You've given me a little bit of it by giving me some suggestions, but what what else would I hope to, uh, that you would hope that I would walk away with if I came to one of your conferences about skill training? I would hope um, universally that someone that joined us at an event would be more competent when they leave than when they arrived. Confidence uh, disguised as uh, combatives training, confidence disguised as firearms training, confidence disguised as uh, speaking in public competence through some uh, experiential events where we encourage one another um, and we're more ready to face whatever different challenge in the arena of life that we're all in at this point um, going away with greater confidence because the skills is areas being developed you know and, and there are things that all of us know that we have this area is not as much of a strong suit for us and we want to see it improve and so um, that's part of our impetus to, to be dynamic in what we're offering just because uh, we, we all want to improve and get better and yet we all have these different you know areas that are things that are interesting us so, um, so yes and, and the skills training is one that's near and dear to my heart um, again being so if a, I came in to get, uh, and, and I go well I've I'm, I'm pretty interested in some of this prayer stuff and the moral formation intrigues me so I'm here for this skills training what um, give me a, give me a, uh, just an appetizer of what that would be like um, at conferences that were more structured um, 
with various speakers, and I've been blessed to do a number of them that had, uh, say, three or more speakers, and some really good practical concepts have been shared by a few cohorts of mine, you might say, and someone that's been anyone that's been uh, at their craft for 10, 20, 30, 40 years, they're going to be able to impart some knowledge, some skills, some confidence. And so I can just, a few come to mind right away and they're reminding us, uh, although this may seem somewhat mundane, they're reminding us of the basics, the basics in life of making your bed in the morning, the basics of uh, a prayer life and praying a daily rosary and some scripture study. And I can think of one gentleman that's uh, a 40 year long speaker and he's able to really encourage not only skills but faith development and kind of across the board. Um, in, in any you know, ministry that has some tenure, and, and you touched on this earlier just briefly maybe before we started the interview, just uh, when there's a team and there's, and there's more people involved then uh, you, know, you, can, you can grow exponentially but you also can uh, resonate with different people and so that ties in with the skills training. Uh, there are passions and certain things that I um, enjoy doing that are kind of my top, but I also am excited to collaborate with people at events. Um, we, we had the Marion Conference last weekend, and it's something that's 24 years in the running, and 8, 10, 12 speakers, you know, four or five priests, and they, they're, it's wonderful. And we need more of those types of things. You know, so so I think what I'm what I'm hearing from you. Let me know if I if I'm if I went down a, a different path than what you wanted me to know. But when you're talking about the skills training and and praying at a certain time of the day and having a place to pray in the house and things like that, it sounds like part of that skill is developing a discipline, a discipline of relationship, right? I, and and, and do you, can you speak to that a little bit? A discipline, a rhythm. I mean, all things that are uh, flowing well have a rhythm. Um, whether it's the the military for the government or it's us as the church militant when we're on this top side of the ground, as I sometimes say, we uh, we use discipline as, as sort of a backbone to uh, rightly ordered um, through the grace of Almighty God. But that's uh, some of our guiding force um, to help keep us on the straight and narrow. Uh, I think sometimes us guys, I mean, I know I can get distracted by shiny things, and, and a discipline and a structure is, is good. and. Um, and it can, I think, bear much fruit, you know. So I, spiritual giants that I've learned from, almost unanimously, there's a, there's a regimen that they follow and a discipline, you know. Well, the, uh, the, the last prong that we, that we haven't gotten to yet, which, which I think is really overarching of the other ones, is your solidarity prong, or the four things that you started talking about. Tell me a little bit about that. If I came to one of your conferences, I would, I would love to hear everything you've talked about here, but what about that solidarity? Um, to walk with each other. Uh, we're made for union and communion, um, and we certainly see society uh, certain elements out there that are just kind of derailing some of these um, community aspects of uh, of our humanity, and it's so so central in a lot of ways. Whether it's cohesiveness in the family unit that that takes work, takes work, or uh, it's it's a religious community and a, a faith family in that sense. Um, that's maybe my favorite, you know. But they're all my favorites, and but uh, the solidarity element. Um, we're stronger together, right? I mean, and um, again, I, I think that's one that uh, is is very needed in the times that we're living in. And when I'm able to grow in relationship with, say, a particular family, and we've done maybe events at their place, or they're looking to have uh, Catholic events at their home, it, uh, there may be an event that we put on, but leading up to that, there might be six, eight, 10, 12, 15 visits, uh, getting to know one another and, and walking and deepening our relationship. Um, and it's it takes time. That's very rewarding. I get to have these opportunities to work with some of the greatest people in the world. So, and the solidarity part. That's you, were, you were you were kind enough to share with me that <coughs> just this past uh, year in 2022, you you did a over you know 36 or more events, either small or big. Uh, is that something? Is that pretty much what your ministry is? That that not necessarily one on one, but small groups, medium groups, large groups, trying to get them excited and, and, and as passionate about a relationship with Christ as you are. Is that is that the main focus of what you do? I would say it's truly both and, and there have been different seasons, and uh, there have been some. Uh, 
challenges and hurdles that uh, the Lord has offered to me and uh, helped me to grow through in the, in the last two years. And um, we are doing more on social media and putting more uh, content out there. And, and that's always been something that I wanted to invest more resources and time into. Um, but yes, I mean, some of my, uh, I, I'm convinced some of my calling is to um, assemble and bring, come together with folks um, in whatever space and over whatever sort of content. But um, I, I think there's a real magic in that, that the Lord brings a grace in that when we are in each other's presence. Now, is your <coughs> ministry, this uh, Catholic resilience, is that ministry something that uh, you have other people involved in, or are you pretty much the spearhead, of the, the point of the spear? So I'm the point of the spear, but I'm certainly not alone. There are some very committed prayer warriors, some of which have been uh, key in uh, relationally and helping monetarily and helping with uh, prayer for eight to ten years. And um, in the past few years, there are a couple kind of content editors that are helping uh, very part-time. Um, and God willing, that can grow to just however many that's the Lord wills. But um, but no, not not doing it alone. Um, I am the full time person, and uh, it um, it's been growing in the last three years. So so yeah, it's been a blessing. That's wonderful. So the, your your ministry is is just about two or three years old. About um, we're in the fifth year full time. Okay, great. We're some part time years for many years. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, so if I uh, if I wanted to uh, know more about your ministry, maybe invite you to come in and do a conference at my church, um, or or or, or is even off church property. Uh, how would I be able to get a hold of you, and how how could I get on your schedule? CatholicResiliency.com is our website, and um, we've got um, some of the larger events listed there. Um, the schedule is more open this year in an effort to, uh, again, put more effort into social media and that sort of thing, and partly as um, response to some of the illness, the things that have been uh, navigated through. But uh, the website, um, we've got um, content on YouTube and a couple of social media platforms. So people can see a little bit of a sampling of what we're doing there. Um, and uh, But yeah, predominantly you can catch us at catholicresiliency.com. That's great. That's fantastic. Well, I really want to thank you for opening my mind to how those four prongs we've talked about, prayer and sacraments, moral formation, skills training, and solidarity, kind of, you you kind of let me know that they all kind of work together, that, that one supports another one, and that, and that we might be, I might be stronger in one, and you may be stronger in another, but us together have, have a way of being able to spread Jesus in the world. And I really, really love talking to you about that. If you wanted to uh, maybe um, think about here for just a moment, and maybe speak to the people at home about something that, that, that you want them to know as we, as we finish our time together. God loves us and he uh, longs for a deeper relationship with us. Um, and he's not counting on um, necessarily what we're doing but he is calling us I think universally we're being called to heroic Catholicism um, to fill our lamps with oil and to uh, sharpen our spiritual swords to sharpen one another um, and I look at uh, lives and witnesses and kind of testimonies of great Catholic forefathers of ours and some like General uh, Venerable Fulton Sheen and he says patriotism and piety go together he says the laity will reclaim the church uh, you know I've, feel called very much to speak into the hearts of laity to uh, empower them uh, to love the Lord and love their faith and strive for that ST in front of their name. If, when we hit the, uh, the end of this life and uh, it's not going to matter if we were uh, successful in secular realms if we haven't achieved that ST in front of our name. I mean, that's the most important thing, right? So That's what we're made for, isn't it? Amen. Well, Saint thank Saint you very Lord. much, Scott. And God bless you for being with me. Thank you, Deacon Tom. It's a pleasure. <laughs>